I'm Frank Ski from the Morning Show on V103. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I don't know how many of you all got a chance to uh, hear the show this morning. And uh, some of you all might be here because of the show this morning. And obviously we got into a very um, intimate discussion. Um, I think a lot of people, you are here in this room because you're not only engaged, which is what it really takes, but you all are concerned. And we all have a level of concern. And I think our people were hurting. There's no joke about that. There's a lot of people who aren't in the same position they were. And there are people that is seeing the money come back. And we wonder when the money's coming down. Okay, so we're going to have a very candid conversation. But first, what I would like to do is introduce somebody who's uh, become a really good friend of Atlanta and, of course, of the radio station. And me and Wanda, in the morning, he is the director of African American and Minority Business Outreach for the White House. His name is Michael Blake. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Atlanta. Good evening, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, sir. Y'all, y'all been taking some good care of us since we've been down here. Thank you. And, and we appreciate that, you know. And if we if we do that right, we'll be down here a lot more. You know, I, I I heard the first lady's coming to Spelman, right? Yes. You know, no no coincidence. No coincidence. So first and foremost, I, I never take for granted a chance to say, uh, my name is Michael Blake. I direct African American Outreach for the 44th President of the United States. Yes. Not Senator Obama, not Mr. Obama, not State Senator Obama, not Candidate Obama, President Barack Obama. That's right, Mr. President. Just in case folks got confused about that sometimes. And on behalf of an absolutely phenomenal First Lady, uh, Michelle Obama. We often tell people that no matter how busy you think you may be, that if uh, the leader of the free world and a, and a sister that's trying to get this society to eat and live better can still go to parent-teachers conferences and soccer games and basketball games, you need to find a way to do the same thing yourself as well. So I'm going to be a practical person because I know a lot of things are going to come up in this conversation. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I always tell folks, I'm still a city boy from the Bronx. Right? Oh, 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 oh. Watch out now. Watch out now. Now, now, now folks who, some folks read the bio, they know family from Jamaica. Yard folks. Got it. And uh, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask for everybody in this room, everybody in this room, pull out your Blackberry right now. Or if you got, if you got an iPhone or whatever your high-tech device may be. We're not going to be. Come on now, just trust me, just trust me. Just pull out your phone right now. I didn't say pull it out to take a picture, I just said pull it out right now. Okay. My email address is. Oh, see, now folks want to start pulling out the phone. Now, now, now you start waking up. M. B. L A K E at W H O dot E O P dot G O V. One more time. M B L A K E at W H O dot E O P dot G O V. In the subject line, W H O dot E O P. G O V In the subject line, just put Atlanta meeting. Don't put anything else in the subject line. Don't put I'm looking for a job. Don't look for help my house. Don't, don't, don't. Look, Atlanta meeting. All right. Send, send that email right now. That's the first thing we're going to do. You got me on that? If you need our help in D.C., it's the second thing I'm going to give you. My phone number is 202-456- 4772. 202-456-4772. Our email address, 
Our email address uh, as well, in terms of the standard email, is Africanamericans at who.eop.gov. Our website, see, I'm a practical person, because at the end of the day, you're going to have a lot of questions, but you need a way to follow up with us afterwards. Is which, which one? The first one or the second one? African Americans at who.eop.gov. But I'm going to ask that you send the email to the one I said first, the M. Blake email. Our website, whitehouse.gov slash African Americans. Okay. So now you have all the ways to reach us. No matter what we do afterwards, now you have a way to reach us. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of our team here from the administration uh, that we want to make sure uh, that you become aware of because you know Mike Blake and Michael Stramonis are going to be down here and there, but they're folks on the on the ground uh, that make things happen. So Cassius Butts from SBA, uh, you're here. Stand up, wave your hand. I know that I saw him Where is he at? He's outside. Brother's always outside. Uh, he's from the Small Business Administration. That's our district director here. So if you have questions about SBA, make sure to connect. SBA, the Small Business Administration. Cassius Butts. And they, are there are others from the team? Come on, stand on up, team. From SBA, introduce yourself. I'm Terry Dennis, and I'm the Georgia District Director of the Small Business Administration. Terry? Dennis. And? So, so let me make sure, make these connections happen now. When you have local, because this is practical right now. At the end of the day, folks need help, right? So you need to know where to go to on the ground and not just come to us in D.C. You need to know what's happening there. So that's one step. Our MBDA team, uh, Pat Haynes, Joanne Hill. Hi, I'm Pat Haynes, Minority Business Development Agency. And my email address is Pat Haynes, Jr. at Watch out now. Say that again, please. M E D A dot gov. So P H A N E S at M B D A dot gov. And? Good evening. I'm Joanne Hill, and I serve as Chief of Business Development for Minority Business Development. My email address is jhill at M B D A dot gov. And we have a staff. Business development specialist who will come here with us this evening and reach us at 404-730-3300. 404-730-3300. All right, so the email again, if y'all couldn't hear, the email was jhill, J-H-I-L-L, at mbda.gov. And their phone number for their office, so that's the Minority Business, Develop De Minority Business Development Agency, 404-730-3300. 404-730-3300. Anyone else from the administration here? I saw, I think I saw GSA. Sham Reddy from GSA. Our regional administrator. Administrator for General Services Administration. Uh, procurement real estate fleet arm of the federal government. My email is sham.ready at gsa.gov. You can go on the website. I'm in charge of the southeast. Oh, gsa.gov. Go down in. They want you to spell it out too. Okay, S H. Oh, you want my email? S H Y A M as in Mary. Dot R-E-D-D-Y at gsa.gov. So, uh, so again, the regional administrator for the General Service Administration, you all probably never had something like this. You got folks in the White House and all these agencies in one room, one time, right? S-H-Y-A-M dot R-E-D-D-Y at gsa.gov. I saw your special assistant, Meredith Lilly, around. Yep. There's Meredith Lilly from GSA as well. We're going to make some connections. Anyone else from the administration that's here? Okay. So, we're here first to say thank you to everybody, and obviously to your phenomenal mayor, Mayor Reed, who I don't, I don't ever think we can say this enough. 
there are few folks that fight for people the way he does fight for you. And, uh, it's real easy to go quiet when things get difficult. A lot of folks just don't know how to keep fighting, but you know, to your mayor, keep keeps on fighting despite all that's going on. So here's the purpose of why we're here. We're here to say on behalf of the White House that this is your house. We're here to open up the doors and start this conversation. We used to be called the Office of Public Liaison. We changed it to Office of Public Engagement for the reason of opening up the door so you can know what's going on. So first and foremost, you need to understand there are a lot of things that are ha happening right now to help the black community that you may not have been aware of. Because sometimes people say, what have you all done for the black community? You know? Now you have other folks who are always just trying to beat us up. And it doesn't really matter what we say or do, they don't really care. So, we can run down the list. We can talk about how we made sure a billion dollars went to black colleges over the next 10 years. 850 million for HBCUs. We can talk about how 7 million black folk have health care that they didn't have before we got here. Now 32 million Americans have health care right now. We can say that through last June, 3 million people in this country had their jobs created or saved that would not have been here. Hear me again. 3 million jobs would not have been here. Specifically in the Atlanta region, led by MBDA, one billion dollars last year. One billion dollars went out to minority businesses and grants and financing. We can talk through the list over and over. We can talk about crack versus powder cocaine. When we came in, it was 101. We brought it down to 18 to 1. We can talk about Pigford. When folks were talking about Pigford, not doing anything about Pigford, we were the ones that got it done. We can talk about how the first act the president signed was the Lily Led Better Act saying to all you sisters that your equal work deserves equal pay. We can go down that list. We, we can go down the list of saying to folks, well, well, why does health care matter to me? Well, it matters because now your young adults can stay on the parents' plan until the age 26. It matters to you because senior citizens can now get those rebate checks for $250. It matters to you because now you can get free preventative care for colonoscopies and mammograms. It matters to you because 4 million small businesses got tax credits that they didn't have before. It matters to you because those that are 55 to 64 can get coverage they didn't have it before. You need to start fighting for us right now. We need to make it plain for folks right now that a lot of things are happening. I'm not saying that everything's perfect. I know folks are still hurting right now. You know, when we talk about how to keep people in their homes, we created a program last year called the Mortgage Forbearance Program. Very practically, if you became unemployed for reasons outside of your control, you can get assistance up to six months to pay for your rent and or for your house to have your mortgage delayed. We created that. A lot of people may not have been see I'm here, folks. I didn't know about that. It's not. No, hold on now. There are ways, now, let's be fair. I think sometimes we expect everything to work out very easily, and if every time we compete for things, we're gonna get it. Now, we can walk through how to make it easier for folks to compete for these things. The reason why we're down here in the first place, now working with GSA and HHS, we have federal procurement. You hear about these contracting dollars that folks are always trying to talk about how do we get into the process. Beforehand, as of last year, it was about 21.9% in terms of dollars that are going out to small businesses. Now, we want to set the record straight. There is not a minority business goal in government. Congress never created one. What they created were small business goals, women-owned business goals, service-disabled veterans, etc. Here's why you need to care about this, and here's why we're finally focused on this the way we need to be. Every 1% we go up is $4 billion on the street. Every 1% we go up is $4 billion. And that's the reason why today, Sham and, 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 and Administrator Johnson and then Hoff from HHS, we had an event today to literally work, walk people through, here's how you can get access to these opportunities that you didn't have before. We went to Detroit, had Department of Defense go there. Here's the reason why you need to understand this. Seven agencies oversee 90% of those dollars, $413 billion. So literally, we just focus on these agencies. We told them, this is about minority businesses, and specifically black businesses, Hispanic businesses, Native American businesses, Asian businesses, who've been trying to get in the door, women-owned businesses trying to get in the door, service disabled, veterans, everyone have been trying to get in the door, let's change this right now. And hold us accountable to make it happen. And because a lot of times folks have been talking the talk, and we said, well, no, we're going to get out there. So we had deputy secretaries go out there. We had Valerie Jarrett now on top of this initiative. Because at the end of the day, everything we do is about jobs. 
and folks get jobs, that turns everything around. That's right. You know, and a lot of folks were talking about, well, what are we trying to do? Well, when we talk about education, that's connected to jobs because it doesn't really matter how uh, 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 someone goes to school. We need to graduate from school and then get a job. You know, one thing that we did that we changed last year is, and it's going to get finalized by 2014, if you take on a loan from the federal government and you do any form of public service, if after 10 years, whatever that loan amount is, it gets waived. We also created an income-based repayment plan so that you know a lot of times folks were coming out from school and then their loans would be 30, 40 percent of what they had for their income. We capped it at 10 percent. Because now what that means is if someone walks out from school, if they're so worried about their loans, they're not going to go back to the community. They're going to be looking for that job to help them pay for that loan. And, and that creates a cycle of us always losing out on our own that are trying to do the right things back in their neighborhoods. If you know, hold on, I can make it right now, I'm going to go back to where I came from in the first place. So this is about jobs. When we talk about what's happening at the Environmental Protection Agency, this is not some just sort of feel-good thing. The air that you breathe, the water that we have, that's about jobs. That's creating jobs. When we talk about green opportunities, that's creating jobs. When we talk about what's happening with GSA, HHS, all, these, all of this is about jobs. Nothing else we care about more importantly is jobs. Now we got other things going on as well. So like criminal justice, for example, because too many brothers and sisters are getting locked up for crimes they didn't commit in the first place. And those that are going to jail and not having a chance to have their lives turned around, it doesn't make sense. Look, you don't have to tell me anything about how crime can wreck a family. I have two brothers who got locked up for crimes they didn't commit. I, I, I told folks, I'm from the Bronx. I remember very vividly when my brother got locked and got harassed because they supposedly had burglary tools in the trunk and the burglary tool was supposedly a plunger. All right? So you don't have to tell me about what happens when folks get harassed on the block. I tell folks often, you know, I might work at the White House, have on a nice suit, nice badge, but if I walk down the street in many of these cities, it doesn't really matter. I can still get harassed just like anybody else. So the reality is, how do we fix these paradigms? How do we do some different things? Well, one thing you need to know is $803 million to help a prisoner reentry program. So that you don't have folks just going in and out, going in and out. How do you help that brother and sister so if they go in, for whatever reason they go in, give them a reason so they don't have to go back. Because if I take away all the resources for you while you're in there, how am I going to stop you from going back in? $98 million for at-risk youth and youth ex-offenders because some young brother and sister who made one mistake shouldn't have the rest of their life lost. So this is about... We can go down the list, and, and there's a lot of different things that are out there, and there's a lot of different things we can fix, and then we can work with you on. But very practically, the reason why we are here is for, number one, you to know there's a lot of things going on that are helping our communities. Number two, if you don't fight with us, who will? Because a lot of times, people have made very clear their vision. They want this man to be defeated. They don't want him to be successful, despite all the things that he's done, despite how he saved the autos, despite how he saved the health care system, despite how he has people working. We created more jobs in the last four months than any span since 1983. The problems are it was so deep in our communities. And people didn't care. People weren't trying to fight for us. When we walked in through the door, 760,000 jobs were being lost a month. So put that into context. We didn't start at zero. We started at negative 760,000. Now we're at a point where we're creating 230,000 jobs a month. So clearly something's working. But there's more to be done. That's why we talk about let's make sure we continue to have training and development because we can create all the jobs we want, but if someone's not trained and not ready, they can't be ready for that job. Let's make sure we focus on those schools so that when someone graduates, we say our education vision is from the cradle to the career. Because from all steps, I need to prepare you to get a job. That's why we talk to folks all the time. You know, look at you know, Georgia, obviously, be one of the states. Race to the top. How do we get some dollars out so that you don't have no child left behind and leaves the money behind? This is about making sure we create some processes to train folks, all of this being about jobs. Everything we think about is about jobs. For you to stay in your home, you get to stay in your home when you have a job and you can pay the bills. When you want to do the things in your community, you have a safer community and you feel better when you have a job. There's pride in the home and people aren't leaving the homes when they feel like they have jobs. If you can't figure it out by now, there's nothing we think about other than jobs. 
Now, what we need for you to do is work with us on how can we do a better job. And I also need you to work with us to make sure that this man who has gone above and beyond in so many different ways, who gets beat up every single day, for all what he's trying to do is just help a world that was about to be lost. If we just imagine what the alternative could have been. If we don't get serious right now and start making people aware of the consequence of inaction, if we don't let people understand right now that if you don't start organizing, start mobilizing, start educating people about what we need to do, the consequence of what that be, you don't want to be in the space where you wake up the day after and then wonder what happened. I remember very vividly our Secretary of Navy, his name is Ray Mavis, he told us the story of when he was governor of Mississippi. About four days before he was going to run for his re-election, he was up by about 17 points. And for some reason after the election ended, he lost. Because people took it for granted. We can't take this for granted. Because you understand what people want to do. You understand they want to repeal health care. You understand they want to repeal financial regulatory reform. You understand they don't believe in all the things we've been talking about. They don't care about your kids. They don't care about our communities. They don't care about where we're going. They want us to be defeated and to fail. So if you need to ask yourself, how much do you care? And will you work with us on mobilizing these masses? I tell folks all the time, if you can't figure it out by now, I preach pretty often. Romans 8.18. It says, for I reckon that these present sufferings of this time, of this generation, are not worthy to be compared to the future glory about to be revealed to us. I want to see that future glory. And you can't see that future glory if you sit on the side right here. So this is where we go from here. I'm here to announce to some, we announced it on Saturday, of our 11 and 11 initiative. I want to make sure that we reach 1 million African Americans and have 100 events in 2011. Because my thing is, they can't touch us on policy. They can't touch us on how we're trying to help folks because they made clear what their decisions are. We have to get out and go talk to folks of how we can help people. Yes. That's right. Yes. And how to make these connections. These our staffers are not here just for show. They're here because they want to help people. You don't go into government for the, the salary. You don't go in for the glory. You're going in because you're trying to help somebody. And if we just start organizing, well, we were just at Spelman, talking folks at Spelman and from Morehouse and Clark and Lane about how we need the youth to get organized. Good. We were talking about when we have these women roundtables and what's happening with, you know, so many times what they want to do. We were having a conversation last week about possibly shutting down the government because they want to talk about Planned Parenthood. Yeah. Put into context what we're talking about right now. This is the space that we're in. So 11 and 11 is, I want for you to help me, not just here in Atlanta, not just in Fulton County, not just metropolitan area. You know people all around the country. Help us organize, help us get the message out. Go to whitehouse.gov slash African Americans and get the information right there. You can download it all right there. For all the young people here, go to whitehouse.gov slash young Americans and get the youth round tables. Let me, let me close with this. And we're going to make this conversation and your, your mayor is going to have some comments. Let me give some inspirational, hopefully aspirational points to think about. There's a photo in the West Wing right now of a young brother. He's only about eight or nine years old. And when you see the photo, all you see is him stretching out his hand and the president kneeling down. He kept saying over and over before the photo was taken, I have to meet the president. I must meet the president. No one really understood why. When we took him back to the Oval Office, he said, Mr. President, I just got a haircut. And I want to know if your hair feels like mine. Don't mess up this opportunity we have right now. Because if an eight-year-old kid can understand the magnitude of this moment, if an eight-year-old kid can understand what we did to get here, we can't be here in Atlanta and not understand what we did to get here. You don't forget what Lowry and King and Abernathy and Hype, all, all the folks did to get us here. Don't take for granted that we're here right now. Janae Roscoe had my job before me, told me the first time we sat down to meet. She said, Michael, for some reason, God decided that of all the blacks that have lived on this earth and all the black folk that are going to live thereafter, he chose you to direct black outreach for the first black president. I don't come around the country just for show. I'm coming around here because I want to help somebody. And if you work with us, we can transform some things in this country. Because we are going to leave a greater legacy for all that got here. So as we close with this, winning the future 
is the vision. It's, you, know, you should think about that like the new yes we can. When in the future, you should think about it all. T-shirts, church fans, church hats, grocery stores, chicken shacks, fish fry, fish fry, I don't care where you at. You should say when in the future. And notice, we did not say when the future. When in the future. Because the president told us this. When we were having that good stretch on the campaign, we had won about 12 states in a row, and he was still calm and was still relaxed. He said, Magic Johnson told me something. And he, and he was talking about a story he had before. Magic said, I don't get excited about conference championships. I focus on titles. <laughs> Winning the future means I focus on getting some titles. We need some titles to change what's happening in our schools. We need some titles to make sure we get some folks some jobs. We need some titles for criminal justice, for housing, for all these things that's going on. We need titles for people to start respecting our sisters the way you need to get respected. We need a titles for you to get respected. But this is what we're trying to do. So if you work with us, we can outbuild, out educate, out innovate. That's what you're going to hear all the time. Outbuild, out educate, out innovate the rest of the world. Outbuild, out educate, out innovate the rest of the world. That's how we need to think about this thing. When you go to sleep, there's someone else around the world trying to beat you right now. So if we stay focused on trying to make sure we are winning the future, we can do some amazing things. Lana, I appreciate you and look forward to the conversation today.